always came to serve me. Come on, get inside. It is a six yet. It's all over. Get in. in one lump from Prince Lowenstein's agent, and then all the small sums, 10,000 at least. The roads are dangerous. Tomorrow morning it'll be here. Ah, we should be thankful, Maya. Business is good, eh? Nearly a thousand golden since morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mama. Yeah? That agent. Did you notice him? What? <laughs> There he sat, sly and smiling, uh, planning to rob this poor old Jew Rothschild. And here I was, so innocent, a little child, a baby, in fact. <laughs> and there was that fine old clock that his master had sent him to bargain for. Yes. And when at last I let him have it for less money than it cost me, I could see in his eyes how pleased he was that he got the better of this little baby. So what it under cost? A spat to catch a mackerel, Mama. He thinks he's so clever, and I'm so stupid. Always make them think they're clever. <laughs> Mama! Eh? I've been robbed! Maya! Bad! A whole garden! A dead loss! Bad! Are you sure? Sometimes they're only cracked. You're right, Ma. Who gave it you? Could it be that? That agent. And I gave him some wine, too. Some of the good wine. Shmaya, he'll come again. Yes, he'll come again. And then, Mama, I catch my macro. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one can ever say you don't deal fairly with your customers, Mama. It pays in the end, Mama. Now finish your account, now lay the supper. All right, Mama. Don't be very long now. The roast is almost done. It smells good. Yeah. Uh, looks good too. Mm. <laughs> Collector, boys. Mama, put away the silver. I have. James, over the fireplace. Remember, no deal for the last five days. Understand? Yeah, Father. Are you hungry? Not so very. Then look hungry. Look hungry. <laughs> Anshel Solomon, you remain below. Mama, hide the roast.
take her out, Scotty. Mama, take your sewing. There. Nathan, find me. Nathan, take your hands out of your pocket. Open up, Jew! Who is it, Nathan? Now then, Rothschild. Why, it's my good friend, the tax collector. Bring out your account book. Certainly, sir. Here it is. I was just looking over it. Things are very bad. I was saying to my poor wife, Gudella, this is our friend, the tax collector. Never have I known such a bad month. No. For five days, not one garden have I seen. <laughs> Uh, customers come, yes, but, but they don't buy. No. And no one's traveling these days, so my exchange business is worse than nothing. Uh, I shall soon starve. Starve, eh? But something smells good. Mm. One of our neighbors must be having a roast. Close the window, Mama. What do you take me for? Now bring out the real books. Real books? Why, Excellency, I don't understand what you mean. Rothschild, you're doing more business than any Jew in Jew Street. You're going to pay 20,000 <gasps> golden. 20,000? Oh. Why, accounts of the big merchants in the city doesn't pay as no. much as that. That's another matter. He's outside the ghetto. Oh. He's not a Jew. Oh, if you were going to kill me this instant, I could barely raise a thousand golden. Upstairs. That's the house. Call the badger farm. Well, uh, I might perhaps raise a uh, 2,000 garden. <laughs> Very interesting. Oh, that. Nathan, lift up the trap door for the gentleman. Uh, uh, just some old stock. We have a little wine down there. <laughs> Not very good wine, I'm afraid. Good wine costs money. But no account books, no gold, no jewels, I suppose. <laughs> jewels? Jewels. <laughs> I've had to give up dealing in jewels long ago. It needs capital. Shall I lead the way? You follow. At a distance. Stand up, Jew boys. That's green, Excellency. Do what I say. Oh, it had wine in it after all, eh? <laughs> Slop. Yes, sir. That's what we drink. Ah. But there's some here that Father keeps for his special customers. Won't your Excellency try it? It's good. Your Excellency does us honor. Rothschild, apparently you've been telling me the truth. So do you know what I'm going to do? No, Excellency. I'm going to charge you 20,000 golden just the same. But I can't do it. There's not that much money in the whole ghetto. Rothschild, you'd like to pay only 2,000 golden again, wouldn't you? Yes, Excellency. Now, what would it be worth to me if I put you down for 2,000 this time? A very handsome present for your excellency. Say, a thousand golden. Dark sense, Rothschild. I want 10,000. Would you leave me and my family penniless? With a great deal of pleasure. Come now. Well, perhaps a 3,000 golden, but that's the limit, the actual limit. I'll take 6,000. I will. We'll make it 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have it ready tomorrow. I'll call. 
And if any of you breathe a word, I'll have your house burned to the ground. Boys, you did well. Uh, Nathan, you're a smart lad. That wine, Mama, <laughs> you should have seen him. And after all, a 5,000 golden isn't as bad as it might have been. No. But it is bad to have to pay away 5,000 golden. Not as bad as having to pay away 20,000, Father. <laughs> Six o'clock, all Jews inside. Can we all night? Come on, let's get out of this ghetto. Do you like the bathroom? Oh, let him go. Mr. Rothschild. Mr. Rothschild. What's the matter? What's happened? The man who was bringing your money from Hamburg has been waylaid by the tax agents outside the city. What? They heard he was bringing the money to Jew Street. They might have killed him, but he got away. He got away with the money? No, they got it, Mr. Rothschild. They got the money. What? All of it? Yes, all of it. You hear that, Mama? You hear that, all of you? 10,000 golden, our money that we worked for. Why doesn't your mighty strike them dead? Papa, oh, don't get excited, it's bad for you. Now listen, you are young, your lives are before you. You've got to fight, fight for yourselves, fight for our people. <laughs> Mama, I have to cheat the tax collector before my own children. Do you think I want to do that? I live honestly, I trade honestly, I want to be honest with them. But they won't let us. We are Jews, taxed to death. Forbidden to learn a trade, forbidden to own land. They keep us in chains. They send men here to rob us. So work and strive for money. Money is power. Money is the only weapon that the Jew has to defend himself with. Oh, never! Come, I want to speak with you. All of you. We're here, Papa, all of us. My sons, when I go, I leave you in your mama's care. She is wise, far wiser than I, and good. Do always as she says, and you will grow rich. Come closer. Much money is lost through sending gold by coach from one country to another. In times of war, it is seized by the enemy. In times of peace, by thieves. You are five brothers. I want you each to start a banking business in a different country. One to go and open a house in Paris. One in Vienna. One in London. Choose the most important centers. So, that when money is to be sent from here to London, let us say, you won't have to risk life and gold. Amsha, here in Frankfurt, will just send a letter to Nathan in London saying, pay so-and-so. And that will be offset by loans from London to Frankfurt. Understand? Yes. In your day, there will be many wars in Europe. And nations that have money to transport will come to the Rothschilds because it will be safe. Papa, you mustn't talk anymore. The doctor... I'm giving advice to our sons, Mama, that the doctor cannot give. Remember, unity is strength. All your lives, you must stand by one another. No one brother must be allowed to fail while another brother succeeds. Your five banking houses may cover Europe, but you will be one firm, one family, the Rothschilds, who work always together. That will be your power. And when that power comes, remember the ghetto. I shall be here. I shall never leave the house where they were all born. And remember this before all, that neither business 
the power of all the gold in Europe will bring you happiness. Till we, our people, have equality, respect, dignity, to trade with dignity, to live with dignity, to walk the world. have 15 million florins immediately, and more later. I think it can be done, Prince Metternich, but I shall have to consult with my brother Nathan in London. Come, come, Solomon, can't you decide now? Your Highness is aware that the Rothschilds work as a family, and we've made Nathan our head. The Rothschilds, there can be no peace in Europe as long as Napoleon controls Italy. 16 million ducats, as soon as possible. If your highness will keep the utmost secrecy, I will endeavor to obtain the consent of my brothers. You must realize, Monsieur, entirely wrong, how difficult it is for the Paris house throwing stones at it, and I'm afraid some of the stones went wild and hit you, Julie. What do you mean? I've just come from a meeting of men in society, the kind of society to which Fitzroy belongs, and they stoned me because I'm a Jew. Fitzroy, isn't that so? If... Julie, you must give him up. Give him up? I can't. I know best. But you don't love him, I do. Will he continue to love you? Father, this isn't like you. You've always fought for what you wanted and got it. Well, perhaps I'm a fighter, too. This fight's been going on for 2,000 years. Things are changing. You said so yourself. I was a fool. I thought we'd swept away these prejudices, but I was a fool. Fitz knows what he's doing. We've talked this thing all over. We're ready to face the consequences. While well, you're young, but what are the years to come? There's no one else in the world for me but this, and I won't give him up. Well, Nathan, what is it? They didn't outbid you. Yes. My bid was thrown out. On a technicality. A technicality? Because I'm a Jew. But they did me a great service. They showed me just how they were going to behave to Julie if she married into their set. You'll do as I bid you. I'll try it, Father. Nathan, what have you said to her? You can't ruin their lives. No, I'm going to save them. Hannah, she mustn't continue to see this man. You must get her away. But where? Take her to Frankfurt and take her at once. Excuse me, sir. I heard the result of the meeting and came to offer my sympathy. Oh, <clears throat> thanks. If you have any spare sympathy, you might keep a little in reserve for bearing Ladrance and company. I don't think they need it, sir. No, they may later. Do you realize that Ladrance, Metternich, Talleyrand, and the rest of the party are taking a fourth of this loan without a penny between them. But they'll make millions on the rise. Ah. 
He's tired. Perhaps I'd better call again later. Ralph? Yes, if you could buy government 4% bonds at 60, would you pay 74 for them? <laughs> no, sir. Would you, Hannah? Goodness me, no. I thought not. Nathan, what's in your mind? Murder. <laughs> Hannah, I'll tell you exactly what's in my mind. And this may interest you too, Ralph. <laughs> Baring and those others headed by Laidrants have taken this new load at 71. On the first of the month, they're going to offer it to the public at 74. It pays 4%. But there is already in existence a previous government bond, which also pays 4%, of which we have a large holding. Yeah. This bond is now selling at 73. Hannah says I'm tired. But I'm not too tired to realize that if the public can buy one government bond for 73, they won't buy a new issue bearing the same interest for 74. That's true, sir. But Baring and the other bankers will run up the old bonds, and when they rise to about I 75... I know what you're going to say. They'll make the old ones rise, and then launch the new ones a point lower, and the public rushes in. Quite so, sir. But suppose there is no rise. Hmm? Suppose somebody pricks the balloon and it doesn't go up. Suppose before they can run it up, somebody else begins to run it down. Suppose by the first of the month, these old bonds now selling at 73 should fall down to 63, mm -hmm. then they couldn't possibly launch the new loan at 74 because nobody would buy it. No. And Baring and Laidrance and his little band of bankrupt brigands will wait for it to go up. But suppose instead of going up, it still goes down to 55, to 50, to 45, to 40, why they'll never be able to launch the loan at all. And by God, that's where it's going. So. 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 Look at Rothschild. You'd think he was selling apples instead of government bonds. Bonds are now 53. All right. I'll keep on selling till I tell you to stop. You're creating something like a panic on the exchange, sir. I know. What kind of a flower is this that Hannah gave me this morning? I don't know, sir. Very pretty, eh? Smells nice, too. Mr. Rothschild, do you know what you're doing to the market? What have you heard? My dear fellow, I don't hear things. I just imagine them. You know what kind of a flower this is? No. Fifty-two. Fifty-two. That means I'm down about 25 million francs. And you the same, Ledrance. Can't something be done to stop him, Baring? You're the biggest banker in England. Are we all to be ruined by the gymnastics of a dirty Shylock? I've thrown the entire resources of Baring's bank into the pool, but I can't stop it. He's got us on the run. Right. I bet you half a crown that Baring makes straight for this post within two minutes. I'll take you, sir. I'm tired of losing money. I'd like to win some. You're a magician, sir. Here he is. Mr. Rothschild? I don't have to tell you this is nothing less than slaughter. You know my position. I'm responsible for this new issue at 71. And you're making it impossible for me to put it on the market. We are both bankers. You knew I ought to have had a share of this loan. Why did you shut me out? Certain pressure was brought to bear on me. Ha! Laidrance. Well, yes. Then let Laidrance speak for himself. All right, Mr. Barry. I'll come. I'll follow you. About how much has this thing cost us up to now? About five million pounds. All right. We'll make ten. I hope I haven't kept you waiting, gentlemen, because I know you must all be very busy. We sent for you, Rothschild, to make you an offer. You resent being left out of this loan. Mr. Baring, as you know, holds three quarters of it. He is prepared to part with half of that uh, to you. Uh, will that satisfy you? What about the other quarter? That, as you know, is held by us. Oh, yes, you bought it at 71. Well, we're responsible for it. 
You bought it at 71. It was allotted to us. And not against your will, I hope. Certainly not. So you bought it at 71. What do you mean, bought it? Can you pay for it in 71? You know perfectly well that no one is prepared to pay in full for an entire issue. Were you prepared to pay anything? Could you have stood a ten-point drop? No. You took it for a rise. You're financially irresponsible, the whole lot of you. Except Mr. Barry. Well, I know just how much money you've got each one of you. And if I like to hold down the market till after the first of the month, and I can, you're all ruined and dishonored, including Baring's Bank. Now, I'll rescue you on one condition. That you pass me the entire issue at 68. That's impossible. Now, what excuse can we offer to the public? Just say it was found necessary. On what grounds? Oh, on a technicality. No. Very well. Wait, please. We have to deal with Mr. Rothschild. Under the circumstances, I consider his offer a generous one. And as the head of the House of Bering, I insist on Mr. Rothschild's terms being accepted. What? Are you going to take it off our hands, Rothschild? That's uncommon good of you. Hey, Count Nessa Road. Are you also on the preferred list? Yes, but I much prefer to be off of it. <laughs> well, we've no choice. I accept. I say yes without hesitation. Complete Rance? Very well. <sighs> to save time, I had this little contract drawn, which I shall ask you gentlemen uh, to sign. <clears throat> you seem to have been very sure of yourself. I was. Quite. Will you sign first? Forty-nine. You won your fight with me, Jew. But remember, victory may be bought too dearly. What are you going to do, sir? I'm going to Frankfurt. I'll leave within an hour. Doctor's doing everything he can for you. Yeah. You must remember, Mrs. Rothschild, you are 88 years old, and I can't make you any younger. I'm not asking you to make me any younger. I'm asking you to make me older. <laughs> <laughs> She's better. She's insulting people. There's nothing to matter with her. Just nerves. Nerves! Do you think I'm afraid of that rabble? I've had 88 years of this, and I'm not dead yet. But we want you to come away with us for a few months. You're not safe here. I was born here and I'll die here. And that won't be soon either. I'll live a dozen years yet. Nathan, 
You ought to know enough about bargains to know the Lord isn't going to take me at 88 when he can get me at 100. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nathan, what's brought you here all of a sudden? He came to see his wife and family. I've been doing that girl of yours. She goes mewing about like a cat that's lost her kittens. She needs a change. She needs a husband. That's what's the matter with her. What about one of the Goldschmidt boys? I'm afraid Julie has ideas of her own. Then leave her alone. She's no fool. Can you tell me which is the Rothschild house? Yeah. That's it. What's the use of our pretending? I don't pretend to father. He knows exactly how I feel. But you see, darling, he's determined too. But you know we can't give each other up. Sending you away from me only makes matters worse. Did you tell him you'd give me up? I told him I'd try. I don't seem to be trying very hard, do I? Let me look at you. How long did it take you to get here? How long have you been riding? I left yesterday morning. How did you manage? I asked Nosy for leave. Who's Nosy? Oh, that's what we call the Duke behind his back. Oh. I think he guessed where I was bound for. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, he said yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had no idea your father was here. No, of course not. What are we going to do? I'm going to see him and have it out. Good. Oh, darling. Won't you see this through with me somehow? I've got you and I'm going to keep you. Then would you be very brave? A soldier? And wear this ring. Oh, yes. It's one of those family things. My mother wore it. Oh, it's lovely. What's the meaning of this? Father, Fitz has only just arrived. I saw him and brought him in here. Does your mother know? No. Now, nobody knows but us. Why are you here? You knew my wishes? I came here for the same reason you did, sir. I heard there was trouble and Julie was in danger. Go to your mother. I'd rather stay and hear what you have to say to Fitz. Please go, Julie. It's no use, Father. I had a good reason for keeping you and my daughter apart. I desire that you respect my wishes. If Julie weren't agreeable, I wouldn't be here, sir. But her happiness is involved as well as mine. Unfortunately, we differ as to where her happiness lies. What has changed your attitude toward me, sir? Captain Fitzroy, I doubt whether there's a single man in London today who would suspect me of being a sentimental fool, which apparently I have been. But fortunately, I have a certain amount of common sense, which sometimes comes to my rescue. You'll please understand that your attentions to my daughter are objectionable to me. What is your objection? You're not of our race. That's an objection I think you might have raised a great deal earlier. I was a sentimental fool. Walk through this ghetto. Go into the Jewish quarter of any town in Prussia today, and you'll see men lying dead. Julie's people killed by your people for but one crime, that they were Jews. Now do you understand? I'm sorry, sir, but I still love Julie. Julie is a Rothschild, and she'll not marry without her father's consent. Good day. No matter what happens, no matter even if what Father says is true, I love you. Always. The Jews in Prussia know that this uprising is the direct result of your quarrel with Laetrans. And that has made them bitter against you. Fools. Nathan has done more for the Jews in England than any man who ever lived. England is in Prussia, Mama. Laetrans has his agents everywhere. They spread lies and propaganda. You've got to put the screws on. Money is the only screws we have. And now, when Napoleon in exile, 
Late Rance and the Allies need us no more. It's queer, isn't it? We fight for the peace of Europe, and with peace, we lose our power. Well, you've got to do something. They burned down the Levy's house last night, and they burned down this one if they did, but they're afraid of me. You tell all those kings and ministers you feed that if they don't stop this outrage, you will stop their pocket money. <laughs> if I thought Le Drance would listen, if I thought I could make him call off his dogs, I'd go to him. But now, don't worry, Nathan, and make yourself sick. The Lord isn't going to desert us. So take a rest. Leave the work to him. If there was only some way you could handle Ladra. For the sake of our Jewish people, I think you should go to him, Nathan. Grovel at his feet. All right. If you think so, I'll go. He must have his price. And whatever it is, I'll pay it. <laughs> I'll make you gentlemen pay for your wine. <laughs> the cards seem to favor you tonight, Your Excellency. Well, they should. They're my cards. Ah, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, Colonel. Any news? Good news, Your Excellency. Hmm. Dresden. Entire ghetto reduced to ashes by fire. <laughs> It is estimated that 5,000 Jewish refugees crossed the border into the Netherlands. I have dispatched three agents to The Hague to stir up the populace there. Frankfurt. The citizens stormed the ghetto and fired two houses. A serious pogrom was prevented by the arrival of the civic... If he tries to leave, I want him arrested at the border and brought to me here. Yes, Your Excellency. Uh, upon what grounds? Make your own grounds. Yes, Your Excellency. <laughs> the House of Rothschild. The house with the red shield. <laughs> I'll make it red. I won't come back without an agreement from Ladrance to stop this pope, whatever the cost may be. May God be with him. Send word to stop his carriers as he starts to pass through the city gate. Seize him and place him under arrest. Quick. Mr. Rothschild! Mr. Rothschild! What is it, Schumann? This message just arrived at the office, sir. It's from Mr. Nathan. Me? Yes, sir. Escaped from Elba. The French are rallying to his banner by thousands. This means war. Another war. Now you can go to Leyden. Now he needs you. I'm going to have to see him. No, I won't go to Leyden. Leyden will come here to the ghetto. Michael, bring my baggage back. I'm not going. Very well, sir. Of course, Wellington, I'm Prime Minister, but you're the idol of the people. My dear fellow, I'm going to retire quietly to the country, surrounded by me dogs and me books and... Yes? For his grace. Ah, for me, eh? Will you excuse me? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh! That blasted little corset on his back, what? Oh, I gave orders not to be disturbed. It's important, sir. Word has just reached us. Napoleon has escaped and is in France mobilizing his army. Mama, dear. Mm -hmm. well, yes. Why? You're walking just like a young girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, boy. Come here. Let's have another look at you. Well, you're all growing up, aren't you? Nathan, I think you're getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. All of you. 
Your father would have been 92 today. Ours is the richest banking house in Europe, and we're still being kicked. It looks as though we haven't played our cards very well, doesn't it? Perhaps we haven't. I'm not criticizing. I think we're open to criticism, Mama. And that's what has brought us all together here today. Oh, is it? I thought you came here to see me. It seems it takes a war and a Jewish pogrom to get us all together nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not fair, Mama. You know where Well, we're don't let's come. waste time and compliments. What have you come for? James. Nathan, you run the English house, and so you have the sea between you and trouble, but we, Carl and Solomon and Amschel and I, are here in the furnace. I know. And with Napoleon on the map again, our position is intolerable. Napoleon will be in Paris in a week, with the whole army rallying to his banner and deserting Louis. Napoleon's soldiers must be paid, and if he can't borrow money, he'll, he'll take it. Has he suggested a loan? Yes. He sent for me as head of the Paris house. I went to see him in Lyon, and he made a definite proposal. Now listen, Nathan, before you give an opinion. We've issued 450 million francs worth of bonds for a government which started packing at the first blast of a bugle. Napoleon guarantees the payment of these bonds down to the last centime, and on future loans he agrees to double the interest offered by his enemies. What have the Allies to offer us? From the simple standpoint of business, we shouldn't hesitate a day longer. A refusal to support Napoleon means not only the probable loss of a murderous sum, but James's Paris business, my Naples business, will be wiped out like that. And Amschel's and Solomon's are in great danger. It's no longer a question with me. We should support Napoleon. As far as I can see, the Allies seem to be under the thumb of a tyrant from Austria and a scoundrel from Prussia. Metternich and Leydrat. Mama has said we are still being kicked. And she's right. For a quarter of a century, we have stood with the Allies. And apart from what we've got out of it personally, houses, fine clothes, carriages, as Jews, we are just where we started, in the Jew street, waiting for the chains to be put up. I agree with the others. We've got to transfer our support to Napoleon and start over again with him. Well, son? You're right, all of you. Every word you've said is true. But still, we must fight Napoleon. Why? Well, because we're, we're the Rothschilds. For the time being, anyway, we are something more than five rich Jews looking for the main chance. We know, the world knows, that until Napoleon is gone forever, there can be no peace in Europe for Jew or Gentile. You can't deny it, any of you. We've got to take the risk. We've got to swallow our pride, to stomach our resentment. We've got to go against every normal, selfish impulse in us and do what is right for the world. We can go hand in hand with Napoleon and spread this war over years. We can pay for fire and blood till all Europe is a slaughterhouse. And the Jew would stand as a pawnbroker in lives. We can't do it. We must stand as we've always stood. Not for war, but for peace. And if we all go down, we'll go down with honor. We leave no shame anywhere. My son. That is what your father would have said. You're right. I agree. The house with the red shield, Your Excellency. Philistines are upon us. Who is it? Metternich, Talleyrand, and Laidra. Who could that be, the tax collector? <laughs> Something very like it, Mama. Is Mr. Nathan Rothschild here? Your Excellency will enter.
Menards. This is a great pleasure. But how did you find your way? The Duke of Wellington was kind enough to supply us with a guide, Captain Fitzroy, who has, I believe, been here before. Uh, won't you come in? Uh, my brothers and I were speaking of you only this moment. Prince Magdalene? Uh, I won't burden you with introductions, except perhaps to my mother, who was startled by your arrival. Uh, she thought you were the tax collector, Count Lady yes. Welcome to our ghetto. You will forgive this unexpected visit. Mm, certainly. We were expecting it. Then we may assume you know precisely why we are here. Uh, not the precise amount, but approximately. May I congratulate you on your brilliant sound, Madame Rothschild? Yes, I'm told I'm the mother of half the loans in Europe. I am here at the request of the Duke of Wellington and the Allied governments. In that case, my brothers, too, are interested. Uh, won't you sit down? We will not intrude very long. Well, you're chained in at six. Speaking for myself, I admit that I come as a penitent. We've not always treated you quite fairly, Nathan. And now, frankly, we need you. You should join Wellington on the field of battle. He once told me that the test of a great general is to know when to retreat and to have the courage to do it. The Allies need money. Now, we're not asking you to give anything. You're money lenders, and you'll get your interest. Are you sure of that? Don't you trust the powers? No, Austria's bankrupt. France is already in the hands of Napoleon. And so is Italy. Why don't you go to the other bankers? Your own bankers. We have not sufficient capital. You mean they won't take the chance? What if Napoleon wins? I suppose there must be a certain amount of risk in your business. No, we ask security. What security can you offer us? Ah, then don't say you're not asking us to give anything. You're asking us to give a great deal. I see no reason for prolonging this meeting. As you say, we are moneylenders, not philanthropists. We do it for profit. You may as well know that Napoleon has offered us twice as much as you can promise us, and we've decided to take his offer. Gone over to the enemy, eh? I must admit, I'm amazed. How will Napoleon get the money to pay you? Steal it. But that's not our business. I always thought you stood for peace. For 20 years, we've been supporting the peace of Europe. Now we're thinking of the peace of our own people. The Jew? Yes. Napoleon will give us our freedom. That's why we are for Napoleon. Is that your only reason for deserting the Allies? I resent being cross-questioned by you, Count Lady I think His Excellency was about to make a proposition. Oh. <clears throat> well, if we gave you all the freedom that Napoleon could give you, would you then be willing to sacrifice the financial advantage of his offer? Count Lederance, we are moneylenders. Come, come, Nathan, after all these years. What do you offer? What do you want? Brothers? May I speak for you? Yes, of course. We require an agreement, a treaty, signed and guaranteed by your governments, giving to our people absolute freedom. In this agreement, they would lose their chains. They would have the right to follow any trade, to own land, to live with respect, and... <laughs> remember what our father said, Mama? To walk the world with dignity. I fear we will have to lay that before our respective governments. You are your respective governments and you know it. The day this agreement is signed, the resources of the House of the Rothschild will be at your command, and not before. Very well, we accept. Uh, pray excuse this, my lord. Uh, some Gentile has evidently strayed into our quarter. Goodbye, Granny. Goodbye, Goodbye my Anna. precious. Goodbye, dear. Who's got my hat? Oh, here you are, Father. <laughs> James. Father, I'll go on out the carriage with Michael. All right, my dear. James, it's of vital importance that we should have first-hand news from the field of battle. Somebody to be close to Wellington's troops. Whom can we trust? In time of war, nobody. 
What about you? Will you do it? Yes. Huh. And I'll get word to you every day. Of every move they make, the instant they make it, and always by the usual method. Mama. I'll come to the door with you. Oh. Shall be just as short as our money can make it. Good luck. Goodbye, Mama. It's a horse, dear. This time I'm here by command of the Duke of Wellington, sir. Give me the ring quickly. Darling. Well, I must say, I hope the entire war isn't going to be conducted on this romantic basis. Seven fifths right? I give Napoleon a hundred days, no longer. If at the end of that time you're still alive, and you seem to be the type of young man that can't be killed, you can come and talk to me in London. Thank you, sir. I shall count the days. The Times says there's a rumor that the stock exchange won't open today. I wish it were true, but it isn't. Hannah, sit down. When people become rich, very rich, they have grave responsibilities. I know. I mean moral responsibilities that come with money that poor people never know. Yes? Could you bear to be poor? Really poor? I'm asking you now because tonight may be too late. Tell me what you mean. I'm buying on the stock exchange when everyone else is selling. I'm risking everything we have to save the credit of England. I'm sticking to the bargain I made. But things look bad for us, Hannah. Very bad. Are you doing what you feel you should do? Yes. Do what you think is right. And if you fail, I'll love you all the more. And whatever happens, with your love and your flower in my buttonhole, 
I'll still be the richest man in the world. Father, Mr. Rose's phone message. May we hear it? It just came, sir. I thought you should have it before going to the exchange. Hmm. Napoleon has thrown entire grand army against Wellington. James. Worse and worse. Foolish, you lady. These are hard times for young lovers. Father, you said you gave Napoleon a hundred days. This is the hundredth day. Seth hasn't come back to me. I'm a magician. My day may be over, but I know there's a message of love and hope on its way for you. Mm. <coughs> Paris House of Rothschild to help the Allies against Napoleon. My dear Monsieur James, I will be as secret as the grave, but we must have 50 million francs. Visit honors our house, Count Ladrons. Quite aware of that, Anne for Rothschild. I wish no one to hear of it. Only necessity brings me here. The armies of Napoleon are already in Prussia. We've got to have five million gulden to drive them out. I will consult my brother. Ah, that's nonsense. It is an unbreakable rule, Your Excellency. The house of Rothschild never participates in the deal of this importance without the approval of all the parties. That is impossible. My brother Nathan in London is permitted to make a decision. Mr. Nathan, it may be that just one more loan will carry us to victory. You've been most generous, you and your brothers too. And I can assure you, sir, that His Majesty fully realizes that the House of Rothschild has already contributed ten times as much as any other banking house in Europe. Captain Fitzroy arrived this morning from Wellington's headquarters. And he's told me how much the General appreciates what you've done. Lord Wellington's language on the battlefield can't be repeated, sir. But I've heard him declare that he wouldn't swap any one of those five dash dash Rothschilds for any five of Napoleon's dash 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 brigade. May I tell the Prime Minister you agree to one more loan? Do you realize, gentlemen, that the Allies are drawing on us throughout Europe? It's money that wins wars. It's money that makes wars. With five million pounds, we can hold Napoleon at bay. Mr. Harris, tell the Prime Minister I decline to raise five million pounds to keep the Allies fighting Napoleon. I'm sorry. But you can tell Lord Wellington that the five dash dash Rothschilds will let him have ten million if he'll guarantee to smash Napoleon. Oh. Excuse my hat, gentlemen. <coughs> to thank him on behalf of England for his glorious achievement. We rejoice at your safe return. My lords and gentlemen, charge your glasses. I give you a toast. His Grace, the Duke of Wellington. <laughs> Well, that's over. <laughs> ah, empty. Who's got some snuff here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. England's your greatest yeah, soldier. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> May I shake your hands, Your Grace? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, here it is. 
Why wasn't Rothschild here? There was some feeling. Wasn't he asked? Well, no, Your Grace. Some of these people... Wasn't the man who paid for these dash wars important enough? It wasn't a question of importance. It well, was... if he can't come here, I suppose we can still go there. It fits. Yes, sir. Just as soon as I can get away, we're going to call on Nathan Rothschild. He ought to have been here. Dash light, I call it. Ah, more snuff. Do you know where the old boy lives? Very well indeed, sir. Oh, you young blackguard. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that daughter of his. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not sorry. Not in the least. Neither am I. Just stop. I've been trying to tell you for a long time. I've wanted to kiss you. Yes, I know that. But when it came, it was so sudden, it rather frightened me. Frightened? The captain of the guards to protect you? Ridiculous. Well, the captain of the guards is a very dangerous person. Only to his rivals. You know, you're a very conceited young man. Hmm? You haven't even asked me if I loved you. Well, don't you? Yes, I do. I love you more than anything else in the world. And then tonight, after I tuck the duke into bed, I'll call on your father. My speech to him is all ready. I've rehearsed it not less than a thousand times. To trees at night, to guns, even to horses. <laughs> I haven't gotten a refusal yet. I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. Some of those horses were pretty difficult customers. It's no use, darling. You're just dodging the real reason. You're being sweet and thoughtful again. But you're not making me forget that you're a Gentile and I'm a Jewess. Think of the shock to our families. This is no longer a family matter. Spitz and Julie. I've had that crowd at me heels all day. If they had any sense, it's you they'd be following around, <laughs> not me. Oh, we Rothschilds have had just as big crowds following at our heels in Frankfurt, but not with cheers. Well, I'll cheer for you, gladly. And I hope one day Europe will realize she owes you something more than money. Well, my father was a man of peace. He told us never to loan money to make wars, always to end them. And that's been our principle. Everybody knows that and respects you for it. No, Your Grace, they don't know it. And they don't respect us. Other bankers are jealous of us. The man in the street thinks we're just Sherlock's. And Europe hides its head for shame because it borrows from the Jews. I suppose you know it's that Prussian fellow, Count Lederanz, that's responsible for that rot. I know. He hates me and all my race. He's a proper jackass, Rothschild. And he ought to be hanged. I must admit, that the same happy thought has occurred to me more than once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a danger having a man like that in authority. Always making enemies. Well, yes, that's a danger, as they may need us again. What do you mean? Well, perhaps we're not out of the woods yet. Why, Napoleon's scotched. Napoleon's in exile, but he's not dead. Mm, as good as dead, Rothschild. As good as dead. Ah, perhaps. Another brandy, Your Grace. Ah. I often thought it would have saved a lot of trouble if Napoleon had been born an Englishman. Oh. <laughs> Where would I be then? Why, his commanding officer, of course. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Sound brandy you've got here, Rothschild. To the peace of Europe. Well, I'm a soldier, but I drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> I see, Rothschild. A little secret. Mind you. I oughtn't to tell you this, <laughs> but I just heard this morning that they are going to float a dash big loan to put France on her feet. An enormous loan. The biggest thing ever issued. Yes? Well, they've got to do something. France has had 20 years of war and the whole country's torn up. But now they've got peace. They're going to get together, the five allied powers, and help her out. And the banking house that floats this loan will at once become the most powerful in Europe. Its prestige will be enormous. That's it. Now's your chance. Your Grace, I can't sufficiently thank you for this information. Mind you, it's a dash dark secret. But it serves the chuckleheads right for telling me. <laughs> they ought to know by now I can't keep a secret. 
Send a message to Mr. Roeth and ask him to come to me here at once. Yes, sir. We'll drink to the house that floats the new French loan. To the house of Rothschild. And its greatest member. <laughs> ah, there you are. Miss Julie. Your grace? Mrs. Rothschild, you've got to watch this young rooster. <laughs> I'm beginning to understand now why you were always asking for leave to return to London. Now that you do understand, I trust you'll let him come more often. It's against the regulation. Oh. I only saw Julie five times, sir. <laughs> and once when you sent him with dispatches to the Prime Minister, Julie was waiting for him at the corner of Downing Street. That, I hope, isn't against the regulations, Your Grace. Not if he didn't speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't think you knew about that, Nathan. Ah. I'm afraid it's time to go, Your Grace. All right. You can't fox this man. <laughs> He's a magician. There's no question about that. Oh! I see, Rothschild. I've been told you knew about Napoleon's abdication two days before the War Office did. Is that true? Yes. But then the War Office never knows anything for two days after everybody else knows it. Yes, and then they take two more days thinking it over. <laughs> but how did you do it? They say Indians get things by putting their ears to the ground, but you are not an Indian, are you? No, just plain Jerusalem with a heart of uh, gold. Ah. <laughs> Well, I know something about sending dispatches. My man Fitzroy here is the best at that. But if I had 20 Fitzes, I couldn't do it in that time. You knew about Napoleon's abdication almost as soon as it happened. <laughs> How the deuce did you do it? A little bird whispered in my ear. Oh, you don't intend to tell me, eh? <laughs> well, I don't blame you. <laughs> Fitz, we'd better go before he makes us disappear like rabbits in a hat. <laughs> Mrs. Rothschild, you've a charm in a hole. And a charming daughter. Your Grace. I hope that dash crowd's gone. Ah, thank you. Are they still there? Oh. <laughs> and this is the man who faced the Grand Army. Hush, hush, hush. Here, yeah, Fitzroy. Yes, sir. Brandy before the charge always. Uh -huh. Ah, there's military tactics for you. There's a young man who'll be a general someday. <laughs> thank you. I'm good by Rothschild. And remember, it's a dash dark secret. A thousand thanks, Sir Grace. There he goes. Longing for the peace and the quiet of the battlefield. Yes, sir. Mom. Mom, I ought to be very happy, but I'm not quite. What is it, dear? Fitz says it's nobody's business but ours, just his and mine. But it's this wretched family I'm thinking of. You know, Mother, nearly all of his aunts are duchesses and countesses, and oh, I'm so afraid they'll turn up their noses. <laughs> he doesn't object to our money, I hope. No, he says he's willing to overlook that. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Father, please don't think of Fitz like that. Please don't. You're hurting her, Nathan. Isn't that rather cruel? Oh, no, it's my fault. I never told Father I really cared as much as I do. And you didn't either of you think I knew? We businessmen are not supposed to notice unimportant things like daughters and wives. You should know better than that, Hannah. Well, I knew she loved him, but we thought we'd tell you when you got to know him better. Julie, you know the tradition of our family, a Rothschild to marry a Rothschild. But I wasn't a Rothschild, Nathan. No, but you were Hannah, and you were one of our race. That's what frightens me, Mom, these dreadful prejudices. Could we bear it? Fitz bear it. I won't pretend, Julie, that I wouldn't rather you married one of your own people. It's a cruel barrier. Yes. Yeah. But the world's changed a bit, especially in England. There's no Jew Street here. And they're lifting other chains from us, too. So, perhaps... Oh, no. No, don't say perhaps. Say yes. What do you think, Hannah? I think girls should be allowed to make their own choice. Ah. I'm not sure that I agree with you. Oh, but this girl, Father. Well, it's about the first time that I've known a Rothschild to make a bad bargain. You are a Rothschild. And the Duke of Wellington has told me that the Rothschilds did a great deal for Europe during the war. Now, what have your Fitzroy's done? Nothing. Beyond repeatedly getting leave of absence from duty and showing an unaccountable interest in orchids. And a remarkable taste in women. That doesn't show strength of character. Any fool could fall in love with you. Oh, but not any fool could get your consent. He hasn't tried but yet. But he will. And when he does, you'll see him. Oh, you darling. <laughs> Here's Rose looking positively shocked. <laughs> Don't go, Julie. Oh, but I must. I'm engaged. Where are you going, Julie? I'm going out to the orchid house. Look at the orchid. Rose, I sent for you because I have tremendous news. 
This message must go to each of my brothers at once. By what his grace calls our magic. <laughs> Great news. Yes, indeed. Let me have the earliest possible dates on which all private loans can be recalled. Give instructions to grant no more private loans until further notice. I must know at once the exact extent of our available capital. It's the most important deal the House of Rothschild has ever attempted. I'm sure I don't know how they can refuse you anything you asked. I'm not depending entirely on my proof, here. <laughs> Where's my hat? Oh, the carriage hasn't come yet. I'll take a hack. That's what I like to do. It always makes me feel so independent. <laughs> <laughs> sure you won't let me put a little perfume on your handkerchief? Uh, quite sure. Yeah. You're so calm. Aren't you excited at all about getting this great loan? Who'll be there? Representatives of all the big banking houses in Europe. Baring will be there, of course. And the ministers of the country's interested, I suppose. I suppose so. Leydrans representing Prussia, Metternich from Austria, and the rest of them. Still, you feel pretty sure, sir, don't you? Sure of half of it, anyhow. I have private information that ours was the best bid. Uh. The largest loan in history. You know it's the proudest day of your life. The proudest day of my life happened 30 years ago. <laughs> I shan't draw an easy breath. Don't worry. When I say that no other banking house in Europe can match our bid, I'm not guessing, I know. And now where's my hat? On your head, I believe. <laughs> Where it should be. Where it shouldn't be in the lady's presence. I beg your pardon. <laughs> to Downing Street and victory. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye for Good luck. Thank you, sir. But, uh, Mr. Rothschild, even your daughter, Miss Julie, pays me more than this. Ah, Miss Julie has a very rich father. I haven't. Mr. Gamera. Mr. Archer. How do you do? Very well, sir. How are you, Archer? Hello, Hope. Am I too early or too late? Early. They're still in the conference room. Oh. <laughs> My lords and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Barrington. The meeting is called to order. Gentlemen, bids for a French loan for 450 million francs have been received and recorded. Offers to take all or a part of the issue of bonds, the greatest single issue in the history of European finance, were received from the following banking houses. J. La Fitt and Company, Paris. Gaimula, Vienna. Hope, London. Bertrand de Lee, Madrid, Baring and Company, London. It is the decision of the conference that the highest authoritative bid is that of Baring and Company, London. They will be awarded three quarters of the issue at 71. There being no further... <coughs> but you're mistaken, Mr. Harris, there is. I... Mr. Nathan Rothschild. I'm compelled, my lords and gentlemen, to draw your attention to what must certainly be an oversight. I regret to say, Mr. Rothschild, the decision must stand. But my house sent in its bid to take the entire issue, and our price was a point better than Mr. Barry's. Why is that not recorded? Perhaps Count Ladrance would like to explain the situation to Mr. Rothschild. Your Excellency. Your bid was received, Mr. Rothschild. But to put it as delicately as possible, it was thrown out, uh, shall we say, on a technicality. A technicality? What am I to understand by that? You are at liberty to give my statement any interpretation you choose. You mean, in brief, I am a Jew? Likewise, in brief, I do. Gentlemen, I must accept your decision. But since Count Ladrance has been frank enough to admit the reason for our exclusion, I venture to advise him that these attacks on my race are ignorant and futile. He may strike 
and strike again. A Jew falls, a thousand are wounded, but the race lives on. But unfortunately for His Excellency, we are evidently eternal. Mr. Harris, you say that bearings take three-fourths of the load. May I ask who takes the other fourth? That is being taken up by Count Ledrans, Prince Metternich, Count Talleyrand. I see. A family party. Good day, gentlemen. Your luck is out, Mr. Rothschild. to continue to buy? Yes. But it's sheer suicide, sir. Buy. Support the market. But we can't possibly keep it up, sir. How long? It's two hours to closing time. I can't hold on for two hours. Then stop this insane buying. No. I made a deal with Ladrance and the rest, and I won't go back on my word. Buy till we break. But do you realize, sir, that you're holding more than any man ever held in the history of the stock exchange? We've picked our horse, we'll back it till it drops. But here are messages from your brothers begging you to hold back. You're alone in your judgment. I are blind. Where will Europe be if England is bankrupt? And if I can't hold the market, England's credit is gone. But no one man can hold the nation's credit single-handed, Mr. Rothschild. One man can try. I'm fighting in the only way I can fight with money. I'm giving all I've got to give for the peace of Europe. And whatever other Englishmen do tomorrow, I buy today. Mr. Rothschild, forgive me, but why rumors reached the exchange that Wellington has been defeated? It can't be true. I should have heard long ago. We owe so much to you. Will you do one thing more? Come and show yourself on the exchange. They say you're ruined and dare not face the music. Huh. There's a wild panic. Your presence may steady the market. I come. This time, Rothschild, you've lost your luck. Have you had any news? What do you think about this rumor? I don't listen to rumors, Mr. Baring. You hear what they say? Wellington defeated. You might tell me what you're going to do. I have no objection to all London knowing what I'm going to do. I'm buying. Mrs. Rothschild asked me to give you this. Did she come here to the exchange? So? Yes. Look at Rothschild. 
Did you ever see such a cold-blooded fish? He puts a flower in his coat as he stands on the scaffold with a rope around his neck. News just arrived. Victorious Waterloo, Napoleon defeated. The war is over. Gentlemen, listen, listen. I have news, news from Waterloo. Napoleon is beaten. <laughs> You've been over by. Don't play tricks on us. It's important. It is true. Wellington has won in Waterloo. Well, how did you get the news? Yes, how did you get the news? I'll tell you, Pigeon. By Pigeon Post from the battlefield. Now you know our secret. Now will you buy? Buy it with every security you have. Buy it without security. Buy it with your clothes on your back. Buy, buy. Child, do tell me how it feels to be the richest man in the world. One has to be very clever to make a fortune these days. Yeah, perhaps, but uh, far more clever to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, I wish you'd tell me how to make money on the stock exchange. Uh, what's the recipe? Oh, same as for a cold bath. Quick in and quick out. <laughs> <laughs> <Excuse> <laughs> Take your hands out of your pockets. Hands. Strange, isn't it? That young people like that should be just as interested in romance as you and I. May I congratulate you, young people? Thank you, Your Grace. Nathan. You're worried about something. Yes, and I am. I'm confoundedly worried. What is it? Well, Mr. Rothschild, my congratulations. Harry, you're just the man I wanted to see. I'm very worried. Which knee do I kneel on when I go before His Royal Highness? <laughs> grateful to her adopted son, who by his generosity and courage played so large a part in bringing victory and peace to Europe. His loyalty never wavered, his faith in England never faltered. To England he has brought nothing but honor, and for England we thank you, Baron Nathan Rothschild. I used the wrong knee. <laughs> to trade with dignity. To live with dignity. To walk the world with dignity. <laughs> <laughs> 